My first demonstration is going to be of a simple test light. This is a simple circuit. This one uses an LED. Most test lights use a light bulb. However, uh, I'll be just using this LED one for demonstration. So you just simply connect one end to the ground and probe the positive, and your light will light up. And that will let you know if you have power present. It won't tell you how much power or how much resistance or anything that's in that circuit, but you'll know that power is present. So I know this is a 12 volt test light, so I'm only going to use that on a 12 volt uh, circuit. So that's just one precaution you're going to want to take. So as you can see, it lights up. I'm, I'm tracing to see if I can find a hot wire in a circuit, so I'm probing wires. When I hit the hot wire, I'm going to come to a, my light bulb's going to light. I'm going to know I'm, my circuit's complete. A circuit is a circle. Pretty much your, it wants to, your voltage wants to flow, your current wants to flow in a continuous circle. So here we have our circuit is complete. Our bulb is lit up. I took it off. I no longer have a complete circuit. So I just completed the circle and, it, and the power is flowing. If I want to find good ground, so I'm probing around, I know even though this is connected to this wood, it's not a good conductor. But then I come to the ground, and I found a good ground, and, it, and the circuit's complete. So a test light is a real simple circuit, but it, it's very handy to have, and it'll be very useful, and you'll turn to this a lot. And I'll go over this more as we proceed in this chapter. Now a DVOM, this DVOM, digital volt ohm meter, is capable of doing ohms, resistance, uh, continuity, DC volts, AC volts, AC amps, and DC amps. The only downside of using this to check amps is that you've got to open the circuit, or find it open in the circuit, like you're moving a fuse and sticking your probe because your current has to flow through the meter in order to check the amps. Where my other style clamp on amp meter, you can just wrap it around the conductor and it'll uh, tell you your amps. It'll read the amps. And this one is only capable of 10 amps max and it's protected with a fuse. And that leads us to doing some tests. Say I want to uh, check DC volts. This has a scale from 400 millivolts up to 1,000 volts. It goes from 440 to 400 to 1,000 volts. I know it's above 4. I know it's under 40. So I'll set it to 40. If you don't know your, your voltage, just set it to the highest scale. As long as you're not over 1,000 volts, which it shouldn't be. See, I have four uh, terminal, terminals down on this strip. Your black common, com, is where you're always going to connect your black lead. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. We want to check voltage. We want to see what our pressure difference is in this uh, power supply. So you'll see this one has the V for volts, the horseshoe looking symbol for ohms, and the diode symbol. So you know we're going to want to put our, our red probe there. This other section is for uh, milliamps and amps. And that's a protective circuit that has an internal fuse. Whenever checking voltage, you want to make sure you have your probe in the voltage. Okay, we have this set to 40. So let's do a simple uh, voltage check to see what this power supply is putting out. So you put your red probe to your uh, positive, black to your negative. And as you can see, I'm putting out approximately 12.9192, right around 92 on average. Now, what if I take and I reverse these two wires? So, uh, if I reverse it, it changes the polarity. If you look over in this left side here, you'll see a minus sign come up. And that means I have my polarity backwards. So, once you put the positive on positive, negative on negative, 
And I know the polarity is correct in this power supply, in this battery charger. And that's a simple voltage check using a DVLM. I'm not going to check the amps right now. I'm going to show you that once we build a circuit, because I have nothing right here to put a load on, like a light bulb or something. I have to have the load in order to check the amps. But uh, let's go over to uh, continuity. Continuity has that sound wave symbol, the audio volt signal. And you'll see it come up here in the lower left hand side of my screen. Continuity is uh, the continuous flow. So if you're checking a, a wire, or just say a circuit, let's think of a circuit as a circle. So everything wants to flow from your positive to negative or negative to positive, however you want to look at it. We're going to leave the theory out of this for now. Well, hopefully for the whole thing, but whenever you talk about electrical or electricity, there's a, there's a whole theory behind it. So uh, we'll just keep that out. But your current wants to flow, like water flows down a river, it wants to flow in a circle. It wants to continuously go in a circle. So I know right here, whenever you see it, OL, that means open loop. Like your circle is pretty much a loop, right? So that's open loop. This, this circuit ain't complete. So now if I put these together, it's continuous. It's going to do a continuity check. And if it's good, it's going to be a continuous loop. So continuity pretty much stands for continuous. OL stands for open loop. So I'm going to make this a continuous loop by connecting these two leads. As you can hear the audible signal, my meter pretty much goes down to zero. It's a continuous loop. Now if I want to say, if I have a connector that I'm thinking might have failed or something between two points, I'm going to check each side of that connector and it'll tell me if I don't have a continuous loop. If I'm not continuously flowing from this side of the connector to the other side. Or if I simply take this piece of wire with the alligator clips and put one end on each probe, it's a continuous loop. If I take a pair of cutting pliers and I snip that wire in half, it's going to be an open loop. It's not going to be continuous. So that's what continuity stands for. That's what the continuity check is all about is to see if it's a continuous loop or not. The audible signal you hear, on this meter I believe anything under, the lower the resistance is pretty much, how can I say, like a direct wire has very low resistance as you've just seen. I think it went down to like one or two. Let's check it again. Yeah, like zero, there's point one very little resistance. The higher the resistance, the more open the circuit is, that it's not flowing as, uh, as freely. There's something resisting that current from flowing. And we'll get into that when we go to, into resistance. So with this meter, anything under, I think it's 125 or 150, somewhere around there. Anything under 100 we'll say 125 ohms, will give you that audible signal, which is very handy. Because if you're busy probing around inside a car, you can listen for that signal. If you don't hear it, you know your resistance is above 125 ohms. So you got an open circuit. It's not continuous. It's an open loop. That means it's not flowing from one point to the other the way it should be, especially if, you're, if you don't have anything, any resistance in that line. So... Uh, so it's very handy if you're down there and you can't be looking at that monitor while you're probing. You just listen for that signal and that'll tell you if it's a continuous, if your continuity is good. And it's below 125 ohms. Which leads us into the ohm test. Okay, let's check the resistance. What is resistance? Resistance is pretty much something that's resisting the flow, the current from flowing through the circuit, between the continuous loop. Pretty much resistance can, can be compared to a mechanical resistance like your brakes on your car. 
it, uh, it resists you, it slows down, it puts resistance on your rotors, which slows down your car. So even if you push it on the gas and you're pushing on the brake at the same time, that resistance is trying to overcome the, the flow, the power. That's just one example. There's, there's many examples out there. But it's something trying to resist the flow of the current. This is just some basic examples, and I'm going to build some circuits and show you more uh, so you get a visual. Okay, let's get a resistor. Over here, I got a bunch of components from. Uh, I also repair like TVs and VCRs and DVD players, anything that needs to be repaired, power supplies. So I got a bunch of stuff at the house, and then uh, my other test equipment. I have like. I got this awesome electronic learning lab that Radio Shack makes, and it comes with all kinds of components as well, and you can build circuits and timers and all kinds of stuff. It's really handy. And if you're into building electronics, I recommend getting, getting yourself one of those electronic learning labs. They're, they're real handy and pretty cool to have. So a resistor. Let's just do a resistance check on this resistor. We can take a look at the bands and let's determine by the bands how much resistance this should have. It's a four band resistor. And remember that color chart I showed you how to determine the resistance value of this resistor. Our first band is a brown, the second band is a black, the third band is a red, which is your multiplier, and then your, your four, fourth band is your tolerance. So a uh, brown, if you look at your chart, I got it written here in advance. Brown is 1, black is 0, so that's 10. Red has a multiplier of 100, so we'll take and uh, multiply 10 times 100, which is 1,000 ohms. So this should be a 1,000 ohms. The gold band means plus or minus 5%. So if I take a resistance reading of this, it should be 1,000 ohms plus or minus 5%. So on my own scale, I got 400. We, can't, we don't want to select there because we already know we're above 400. We have 4K, which we're under 4K, above 400, so we'll select 4K, 4,000 ohms. These little flips are convenient for doing stuff like this. That way I'm not touching it and measuring the resistance of my finger or my skin. Just take and you plug these into your uh, leads, and you got little clips. You just push up, push them out, flip them on. Okay, this should be a thousand. We determined it should be a thousand ohm resistor by the bands. And as you can see, I got 984. It's a little bit under, but like you said, that last band is plus or minus 5%, so we're within specs, and that's how you check resistance. Everything has some sort of resistance as a load. For example, a light bulb, each your filaments have different resistance. We'll take, for example, this 4157 double element light bulb. By looking here, We'll do a resistance check of this. The heavier filament, the thicker filament, I can tell the leads are the two outer ones, this one and this one. Open up that one there. And that one there. I'm, I know this is going to have a very low resistance, so I'll turn, turn the scale down to 400 ohms. As you can see, I got 0.6. So the thinner element has, uh, I can tell by the leads, it's the inner ones. So that'd be that one there. I got 2.7 ohms, 2.8. We'll say 2.8 on average. We'll cover that more in this chapter later on. But that's how you do a resistance check. Resistance is measured in ohms, and that's how it's performed. I can't really do an amp check right now without a circuit being built because I don't have a load to put on it. So let me go over a couple other little things here and 
then we'll start building a circuit. This meter here is a, a clamp style amp meter with a DVOM built into it. But this one, uh, to check your current, your amps, see how much current you have flowing down that river, you, uh, you simply clamp this over your conductor while there's a load on it and then it'll tell you your current. This meter has a, a couple cool, it's pretty much an auto ranging meter so it's a lot easier like I don't have to select my scale from say 400 ohms to 4000 it automatically does that for you. You just you just put it on ohm, you just put it on the ohms capacitance and uh, also has a diode check there. You just put it there and then you just go to your mode and right now it's in auto. All right, just select the mode to capacitance. Continuity. Back to auto. Another thing, just so you can see how cold I am in here. This one also came with a temp probe. My other one has a temp probe. I could actually use this on either meter. But I would just put this in a just plug it in as you see negative and positive. Common is your negative, right is your positive, of course. And just plug that in and turn it to temp. But as you can see right now in here, it's 61.8 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll turn the backlight on just so you can see it. 61.2, 61.1. I could also change it to Celsius. Alright, 16.5 Celsius. You turn the backlight off, see if it's easier for you to see. Okay, 16.4. So yeah, it's, that's a pretty handy uh, option on this meter as well. Let's go together a small circuit so I can show you.